Did you know that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is a Jojo? If you somehow don't know what they are yet, Jojos are members of the Joestar family and are also the protagonists of the Jojo Bizarre Adventure series. In today's video, I'll be using facts from the Bible and the Jojo series to prove how Jesus himself is a Jojo. I'll go over three things that prove Jesus is a Joestar and for the best part, stay till the end or hit the timestamp to hear all about his stand and see what it looks like. Firstly, we have his name. Many Joe stars have an interesting theme with their names. Syllables from the first and last name usually sync up to form the nickname Jojo. For example, there's Joseph Joe Star. The first two words of both names make up the term Jojo. Same thing for Jonathan and many other Joe stars in the series. Now you're probably thinking, it doesn't make any sense. No syllable from the name Jesus Christ makes Jojo. And you're right. But check this. As we know, Jesus was from Jerusalem and he was Hebrew. The name Jesus is really just a translation from his actual Hebrew name, Yeshua. And if we translate Yeshua to its English form, then we have the name Joshua. So in English, Jesus' name is apparently Joshua, which wouldn't you know it, starts with the syllable Joe. But that's just one Joe, so how about we take a look at his last name for the second one. Now even though pretty much everyone refers to him as Jesus Christ, Christ isn't actually Jesus' last name. Christ is just a title which refers to Jesus being the anointed one due to him being the Messiah and all. So what's Jesus' real last name? Well, that's the funny thing. Back in ye old times, the formalities of last name weren't a thing. Jesus was either addressed by his title Christ or by things like his birthplace or his father as Jesus the son of Joseph or Jesus of Nazareth, stuff like that. But there were no traditional last names like we have today. So that's it, right? No second Joe for this Jojo? Well, not exactly. Since Jesus literally did not have a last name, if we just go with the premise of this video that Jesus is a Joe star, then we could assume that that's his last name. So technically, Jesus will be called Joshua Joe star or Jojo. This naming convention even works for its ancestors too because his dad's name is Joseph, like Joseph from Battle Tendency, and obviously Joseph Joe star also gets you that Jojo nickname. And speaking of ancestors, if Jojos are known for anything, it's been a badass bloodline involved in some insane shit no matter the era. And let me tell you, Jesus is not different. He also has some heavy hitters up there in his ancestry. Firstly, just as the literal creator of existence, the top G himself, God as his first ancestor. Which low key we all do, so maybe we're all Jojos, huh? No, but for real, God is his first progenitor and also his father technically, but it's not just God too. When looking at the regular humans in Jesus' lineage, there's also childs like Jacob who went from just a slave to a high-ranking Egyptian government official in only a couple of years, despite not even being Egyptian himself. Or there's David, who slaughtered absolute beasts like Goliath and is arguably the greatest king Israel ever had. So Jesus also checks out in having a kick-ass family tree too. But what about his companions? After all, companions are as important to any Jojo as their family line. In Jojo, all of the protagonists have various companions that accompany them throughout the story. These companions also come in different roles. Jonathan and Joseph Joestar had Jerry Zappoli and Lisa Lisa as a mentor, Jonah had Team Buturati as co-workers, and then Josuke had Okuyasu and Koichi as his schoolmates and friends. Jesus likewise had 12 companions, they were his students and his disciples who followed him on his journey. Jesus went around spreading his teachings to many people with his disciples helping him with this too. They also learned many things from Jesus while traveling with him. One time, Jesus even taught one of his disciples called Peter how to walk on water. Their journey carried on until the government became wary of Jesus' teaching. Many of them felt it could destabilize the peace and cause a Jewish uprising against the Romans. Unfortunately, Jesus' enemies had the man on the inside. Judas Iscariot is one of the lesser known disciples and this combat sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. All of this resulted in a hectic scene where Judas kissed Jesus in the garden to point him out to his captors. But as they tried arresting Jesus, Peter, the disciple who worked on water earlier, cut one of the captors' ears off. Jesus did heal it back though and then he gave himself up. So now we've established Jesus as a Jojo, what would his stand be? Before we focus on the stand, we first have to look at the user, Jesus himself. The thing is, Jesus not only has a stand, but he is a fucking stand. Okay, no, that's not true. I'm getting a little too excited. But what I meant to say was, Jesus is basically the ultimate life form with its own stand. Kind of like how cars from part 2 would have been if he had a stand too. In Jojo, 
At least up to part 6, we see various characters go through some sort of ascension to get something that gives them a greater strength or stand compared to the rest of the cast. The three main examples of this are Ultimate Cars, Golden Requiem Giorno, and Heaven Ascended Pucci. The difference between Jesus and these guys is that while they had to take steps to become that special, Jesus didn't. Instead, he was born that way since he's the literal son of God and wasn't even conceived normally through sex. He's kind of like a surrogate baby through God, which means Jesus was born ascended already. He being born the literal son of God compares him to a being like ultimate cars. And just looking at the various miracles we see him perform, we see Jesus do things that pretty much no Jojo character is capable of without the help of his stand. He manipulates the weather, transforms matter, heals people from various illnesses, and even resurrects them from the dead. But despite being the ultimate life form, it's not until Jesus is killed that he comes back to life and receives his stand, the Holy Spirit. This stand grants Jesus two abilities. The first is teleportation, and the second is the ability to grant Jesus' power to any human. Once Jesus gets crucified and dies, he spends three days dead before coming back to life. After coming back to life, Jesus uses his stand to visit different people in multiple places, doing all of this with inhumane travel speed. This is something we never saw Jesus do before he resurrected, as his travel speed was always just regular human level. After multiple visits and appearances, Jesus has a final confrontation with his disciples, where he uses his second stand power in them, granting them the ability to use his powers. Before this, some disciples performed miracles, but they could only do it in the presence of Jesus, and most times, it was very, very temporary and short. It was kind of like the time Peter tried to walk on water, but he could only do it for a little bit before he fell and almost drowned. In comparison to this, once Jesus imbues his stand on his disciples and leaves earth, the disciples just go crazy with the miracles, healing tons of people, casting out demons, and withstanding poisons. None of them can match up to Jesus, of course, since they only get derivatives of his powers, but they're still pretty much great compared to any normal person. Judas are always tied to some extraordinary circumstance, and every time within these circumstances, no matter what kind of upbringing these Jojos have, they are always on the good side, trying to protect humanity and stomp out evil. This is no different than what their ancestor Jesus would have wanted, and it's even what he did in his own journey. Jesus spent his whole life showing ordinary people that he can be saved from the devil's grasp and secure eternal life. And that is why Jesus is a Jojo.